Monday of the seventh week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior of the country and down to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered him, We have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. He said, How were you baptized? They replied, With the baptism of John. Paul then said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve men. He entered the synagogue and for three months debated boldly with persuasive arguments about the kingdom of God. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. God arises, his enemies are scattered, and those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so are they driven, as wax melts before the fire. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. But the just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The disciples said to Jesus, Now you are talking plainly and not in any figure of speech. Now we realize that you know everything and that you do not need to have anyone question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe now? Behold, the hour is coming and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home, and you will leave me alone. But I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage, I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. May 29th, Monday of the seventh week of Easter. The first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 1 to 8. In this first reading, we hear about how Apollos is in Corinth, and Paul travels throughout the countryside, going down to Ephesus. Now he remains in Ephesus quite a long while, and when he first arrives there, there's disciples who don't yet know about the Holy Spirit. Remember when we first encountered Apollos, he too had been baptized with the baptism of John the Baptist, a baptism of repentance, but he didn't know about Christian baptism. So likewise, there are disciples here in Ephesus who don't know about Christian baptism, and Paul lays his hands upon them, and they're able to speak in tongues. Now, the speaking of tongues is probably what we talk about when we talk about glossalalia in 1 Corinthians. Glossalalia is speaking in a language that goes beyond words. If you see a beautiful sunset, you're likely to say something like, ah, oh. or if you see a volcano explode, you might say, ooh. Those aren't really words, but they're utterances that go beyond words. Likewise, when we're so filled with the Holy Spirit, words no longer suffice. It's similar to what Pentecostals and Charismatics mean when they say speaking in tongues. Something like yada 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 yada, something like that. This is believed to be the language of the angels. Not necessarily that the angels speak this in heaven, but rather it's in light. It's in the glory of God. We have to be a little bit careful with that though, because Paul put some restrictions on the uses of speaking in tongues because in Corinth, certain people felt that speaking in tongues was more important than the celebration of the Eucharist. And Paul says that's not the case. You should only speak in tongues 
when you're allowed to by the leader of the Eucharistic liturgy. And one or two should speak in tongues and it should be interpreted. The Gospel is from John 16, 29-33. The disciples say, Now we can believe that you're from God because we understand what you're saying. And what is Jesus' response? You understand the time's coming when you're going to run away. Why? Because he's going to be crucified. All the disciples except the beloved will run away. Yet, in spite of the fact that this horrific event will happen, Jesus conquers the world. Now remember, in the Gospel of John, the phrase world doesn't mean created reality. World refers to that part of created reality which rejects the love of Jesus and the Father. Jesus conquers the world by dying out of love for us. His death conquers the hate of the world. That act of love covers over the many acts of hate which our sin have engendered. Evil, according to St. Augustine, was the absence of goodness, the absence of love. By loving, we destroy the power of evil. And that's exactly what Jesus did on the cross. So we can have peace in Jesus because we realize that love is so much more powerful than hate. Love is so much more powerful than our sins. We find shalom because we can trust in this promise of love, which overwhelms us, which fills us with a sense of awe and gratitude. And may God bless us.